G'day, welcome to the Chicken Channel. Now the recipe I've got for you today, it's Southern Fried Chicken. Now a lot of chicken recipes are so unique to certain regions, and this is Southern America, right? Back in the slave days, the slaves apparently could keep their own chickens, and this was an easy dish to prepare out in the field, so to speak. But it's become such a classic, you should try it at home. What we're going to use is we're going to use chicken breasts, and I have here two skinless, boneless chicken breasts. And the way to cut these is always, with any flesh, cut against the grain. See that? So the grain's running this way. We're cutting against the grain into, and try and make these as even pieces as possible. Because when we're deep frying this, they need to cook at the same rate. So take your time at this point, rather important, and away we go. Any large, thick areas will be a bit of an issue. So this recipe calls for two breasts. And again, setting that up against the grain. Nice sharp lines. There we go, same size. Now the thing is, because of this technique, right, which is a deep fry technique, the actual chicken will not dry out. It will be encased in some sort of batter and then the deep frying will seal that, which means a chicken breast, which can dry out when you're roasting or pan frying, will stay moist in this case. So it's actually a really good technique. Nice clean hands. Now, what we have to do here is flavour the chicken breast. First of all, I'll just use a pinch of salt, because we'll be cooking fairly soon. And also a spice mix. Now, with spice mixes, remember this, we're getting more and more good suppliers these days that buy fresh spices, fresh dried herbs that have real flavour and impart what we want. Some of that stuff that uh, you find that's nailed on your kitchen wall has been there for five years, it's got no flavour, so you're wasting your time. So look for a really good spice supplier. They're around. Most capital cities have excellent ones. And I'm um, sure some great country areas as well. Now see each piece is being really well coated. Now that's important because that each piece will be sealed eventually. Here's the trick. The recipe has evolved to the use of buttermilk. Now, I like this. In Indian cooking, there's a the use of yogurt. Um, buttermilk in southern recipes is really good because there's a soft acidity there. Now, that acidity is going to actually tenderize the chicken, which is a really terrific technique. You don't need much, about a mouthful, whatever that is, half a cup. And for that to have its effect, really give that a couple of hours just to let that develop. With all marinades, remember this, just because it's marinated, that doesn't mean you can't keep it in the, uh, on the bench. Into the fridge is the best way to go. But anyway, we'll move on over here. One of the things you do with this recipe is you have to serve it with a fantastic relish. And here's one that's so simple. I'm going to, I'll show you all the ingredients here. The tomatoes that we're using have just been skinned and seeded. Now you've seen stacks of recipes how to do that. Check it out for yourself. But basically into boiling water, cut it in half, push out the seeds with your thumb or a teaspoon, and then chop it up. We end up with about, say, 200 grams of just tomato flesh. Remember, the bitterness is in the skin and the seeds, so that's why we discard those. And you try to keep bitterness in your relationships, you know, that sort of thing, out of your recipes. What we have here, some roasted capsicum. Again, you've seen that done before. Over an open flame always produces a better flavour. So if you've got a gas burner, you stick the capsicum over the gas, and let it char completely, and then you can wash off all the black skin after it's blackened completely. Just doing this into a rough dice. Again, this has a completely transformed flavour because of the actual roasting, and it's fantastic. Let's start throwing these in the pot. The pot we're going to use here is a non-reactive pot. Basically, because we're going to have acid in here, in the form of red wine vinegar. If you were to use an aluminium pot, that would affect the flavour of the dish. The aluminium comes back into it and uh, ruins the flavour. So in with the capsicum, one red one, roast it away. In with our tomatoes. When it comes to sugar, I'm using some brown sugar. There's probably about a tablespoon and a half, say two tablespoons in there. Black pepper and red wine vinegar. 
splash that in, put in about say a quarter of a cup and of course some salt. Thing with relishes is they need to be sharp, sweet and salty. Now let's get this on the heat. This will gradually come up to temperature and then what we have to do is something that all cooks and chefs should do, adjust as you go. And I'll tell you about that as we get to temperature. At the same time, let's put on our oil because we're going to deep fry this. And you have to choose the right temperature of oil depending on the recipe. We'll talk through that in a minute. These are both coming to temperature. Let's see how they turn out. Now this has taken about, say, 10, 12 minutes, but importantly, look, see how the liquid is just about disappearing? This is what you need to do. Two taps and a taste. All chefs, cooks who love to eat should taste as they go. And adjust it according to your own particular tastes. A little bit more sugar. But maybe another tablespoon. You can go up to half a cup if you really like a jammy and sweet. And I like a bit of a kick. Um, been married 25 years here. And in with the Tabasco. Stir that through. And switch that off. As it cools down, it'll become thicker again. Now let's coat our chicken. This is the same chicken we did earlier, except it's been in the fridge for up to a day. Plenty of time for those flavours to penetrate into the breast itself. Plenty of time for the buttermilk to do its thing. And what we're going to do is coat this. Nothing beats the hands. So take the chicken and drop it into some self-raising flour here. There's about a cup and a half, to which I'm going to add a teaspoon of cracked white pepper just for fleck, about two tablespoons of chopped parsley and a little bit of extra seasoning. In this case, a bit of salt. See, the last thing, say about a teaspoon, the last thing you want to do is make the batter without any character at all. So that's why we've added a few more flavours. In with our chicken. All right, and I'll just do one piece here and what we've got here is a really rough old looking coating, all right? You can see that? A lot of times when you're doing fish, whatever, you will put the coating in, shake off the excess, try and make it as smooth as possible for presentation, not in this case. Back in it goes, those little lumpy bits hanging on, they're perfect. They're those little crunchy bits that you go for. I'll do another one for you so you can see closely, all right? In we go, over the top, press it, Hassle it, give it a hard time. Think of someone you don't like. Take me about five minutes, I'll get the look done. Everything's set up and now the most important last step. Now the reason it's the last step is you want your chicken nice and crunchy. So we're talking oil. First of all, I've chosen a fairly wide pan. Simple as that because it won't shoot up. So it's wider, less rise in there, which is pretty good. I only filled it to about a third. And the important thing here is the temperature of the oil. Apart from using a non-flavoured oil, a vegetable oil, a canola oil, grape seed, anything like that, um, we're going to make sure the temperature is fine. Now you can see here with my fancy gun, that's about 154. That's about what we want in this particular recipe. Remember what I said earlier? You want the chicken to cook through into the centre by the time the outside has gone nice and brown. So the way I'm putting this in is uh, away from myself. Right? Obviously to avoid those nasty little three degree burns that just take months to recover from. Just away from yourself. You can use tongs if you wish. In fact, if you haven't done this very often, I recommend tongs. Don't overcrowd the pan. I've got a few pieces in there. I'll do this half at a time and in they go. Now you do need to regulate the temperature of the oil. Now these are rather expensive and you don't, uh, well, most people don't have them. 
uh, I'm checking. Now that's dropped down to about 136, 135, whatever. Now on that heat, the temperature will gradually come up again. I'm regulating that to keep this in the vicinity of 150. Give or take 10 degrees, no problems. And also move it around so nothing's sticking together. Good. You can get oil thermometers, they're really quite inexpensive. Just keep it in there on the side, check from time to time, and away you go. But the important thing is that we cook the chicken all the way through. This should take about four, five minutes. You can see in here now, the chicken's getting that wonderful golden surface. And you see how irregular that is? That's what you want, that irregular look. And that came from getting your fingers in there and just rubbing the chunks of flour and keeping it on. That's the look we're after. The big thing is by regulating the oil, the chicken is cooked in the center by the time that color's reached. Five minutes, in around at 140 to 160 degrees. To be safe, you can cut one open, but I've done this a thousand times. Back in my slave days, I used to make this once a week. So, the other thing is, you know, I'm still a slave in my family. I've got to do something about that. Straight onto some kitchen paper and get the next patch going. Simple as that. Drain it well, get the next patch going, and in five minutes' time, you'll be serving the whole lot. Remember, get the oil back to temperature before the next lot goes back in. When it comes to serving the relish, just spoon that out. You can adjust it with some olive oil if you like a glisten. Doesn't need it, it's up to your own personal taste. But that is a Southern American classic. I really recommend you try it.